for all of the driving force of his stories and the simplicity of his narratives, Zweig's own story is unbelievably complex. And one thing that happened to me as I began working on the book, and for years before I began working on it, is I would pick up different things by Zweig and pick up different things about Zweig. And I consistently felt that my understanding of his character was still insufficient. It eluded me. I think of a remark made by a friend of mine whose mother actually knew Stefan Zweig and lived in the house where he lived for a time in Bath, England. And this woman who had idolized Zweig and idolized the artistic life was incredibly disappointed when she actually met Stefan Zweig and found that he wore stiff suits all the time and was incredibly formal in his manners and didn't seem at all what she anticipated from a bohemian, such as she imagined writers should be. And the reason that I think that that's germane to the ability of Zweig to touch a wide range of people, one of the recurrent themes and most powerful elements in his fiction is Zweig's understanding that behind these very stiff or mediocre or in any other way undemonstrative facades that most of us carry through life, there are seething maelstroms of passion. He got that dichotomy. People working in shops, living ordinary lives, he was willing to grant a hugely symphonic and richly compelling inner life. Reading his novellas in particular, but also some of the longer works, the biographies, we feel that discrepancy between an enormous capacity for love and for hate and for frustration and for fear and for tragedy coinciding with an extremely straight-laced, narrow life that speaks to many of us. And the prose itself has that kind of cool crispness that allies with the discrepancy that his fiction unpacks between people's facades and their, and their inner existence. Many people comment on Zweig having a kind of genius for friendship. He loved anticipating in a very private way the needs of people he just met. He loved to connect people. He was very much that, that type of a character. And he loved to find ways that his own fortune could benefit those who were less fortunate than, than himself. He saw people all the time. He wrote letters all the time. One of the stunning things about Zweig is how prolific he was. He wrote giant biographies and dozens of novellas and poems and verse plays and speech after speech after speech and essay after essay after essay. And we now think over 30,000 letters. So I don't understand how he could have written all the time, that much, and also been so incredibly socially active. Some of those who knew him best believed that when his depression, which was a lifelong thing that he struggled with, by the way, but when that began to really overtake him, it was when he felt he was no longer being nurtured by contact with his friends. Zweig himself was extremely concerned with the question of what fame was. His own publisher, Desmond Flower, had arranged a display of bestsellers between 1830 and 1930. Zweig walked up to look at these books and very quickly realized how few of them he recognized. And he wrote a very beautiful essay about the arbitrariness of fame and about the mistake of trying to overly value one's own success to the degree that one had it. He speaks of how Oh, poor dead books, how silent you have become. This silence he likened to Homeric shades. In their physical figure, there they were, but they had lost all their animation all their life. However, he said, once in a while it can happen that by a kind of transfusion of the living blood of a present-day writer into these works through some kind of alchemy, through some kind of focus, through some sort of concentration of attention and unwillingness to let that shade utterly dissolve, once in a while you can pull one of these books 
out of the shades and, and bring it back to life. Certainly that idea that there was responsibility for a writer to think about that underworld of forgotten books was something that in Zweig's case intrigued me as a, as a responsibility. A, I felt he was just too, too good to have vanished in the way that he did. And also, I think that his story, apart from his work, has about it an incredibly literary quality. He had so many ambiguities that were so rich, and I found it inexhaustible and wanted to go further, both to try to understand him and to understand what lessons, if any, could be drawn from his experience of exile and his experience as a writer that might still apply today.